California Pizza Hut franchises they announced the layoffs of all of their delivery drivers. This is ahead of the new $20 minimum hourly wage in California. We've been talking about, hey, eh, this new minimum wage, it, it got all the way bumped up to 22 bucks. Now it's down back at 20 as a kind of a compromise. This new minimum wage is really going to help out the fast food industry because all those kids are making minimum wage. Unless they're fired. Let's get into it. Here we go. You're fired. Great show. Many of the layoffs will impact delivery operations at Pizza Hut locations in several Southern California counties, according to media reports. How is this not going to impact massively uh, the fast food industry in California? I mean, it, it, it's policy like this, instead of letting the markets operate the way they should, it's policies like this that are literally driving thousands of people out of California. I mean, they're, they're, they're just in droves. Ah, they'll be back. I don't think so, right? I don't think they are. Multiple Pizza Hut franchises in California are planning to lay off delivery drivers as the restaurant chain braces for an increase in the minimum wage for fast food workers next year. Several Pizza Hut operators filed notices to comply with the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act, saying they were discontinuing their delivery services. We no longer need delivery services. We are discontinuing it. Pack Pizza LLC, operating as Pizza Hut, has made a business decision to eliminate first-party delivery services, and as a result, the elimination of all delivery driver positions. A federal WARN Act notice filed by the fast food operator with the state's Employment Development Department said, <laughs> I mean, it's going to help out all those kids working hard to get ahead and get that first job, and maybe they're working through college, who knows what, until they're just none of those jobs left. Yeah. And with, with computerization, I mean, you know, how long is it going to be before a robot's handing us out our, you know, whatever order out the window that, I mean, we can't be that far away. Right. Cause it's, it's the, it's the labor that's an expensive component of these fast food franchises, right? You get rid of that pesky labor component in your equation. You're home free. You're golden. Yeah. California is doing it's doing its best to just push people out of the employment industry, right? Yeah, that's where we're going. So uh, clarifying here, made it a decision to eliminate first-party delivery services. So who's going to deliver the Pizza Hut pizzas now? Well, you, you've got like DoorDash, you've got Uber Eats, any of those kind of third-party uh, companies can certainly bring you a pizza. But what what Pizza Hut is saying is, hey – this isn't in the financial equation. Therefore, ixnay on the drivers, right? You're gone. Another operator, Southern California Pizza Company, also announced layoffs of around 841 drivers across the state. The moves impacts Pizza Hut locations in LA, Orange County, San Bernardino, Riverside, and Ventura counties. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is just crazy stuff. And people in California, all right, I mean, if this is what you're into, uh, yeah, give, give all those workers that big raise they need. And I understand California is expensive, but it's expensive because you have voted in all kinds of taxation and you've just gone down all of these avenues that have put basically business in a crossfire. And, and it's that way in New York City as well. It's that way in so many of these Democrat-run cities, period. You just can't get around it. They're expensive, they're massively taxed, and it's this kind of stuff, this minimum wage tax, not minimum wage tax, but minimum wage being being raised in a pretty quick method. Because what were they before? Was minimum wage in California was like 15 bucks? I've kind of followed, I know Washington State somewhere in there, but we're, we're always having our minimum wage jacked up here. And everybody's, ah, well, it's really expensive. Well, it's really expensive because of so much of the policy you've you've entered into the system has made it expensive. So this is that self-fulfilling thing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you've got a mass out-migration 
from both New York City and in, in New State of New York and California to the point where you are literally talking about congressional maps could change by 2030. Here's what that looks like. Texas might get four more seats. Florida, three. Who's the big losers? California and New York. Minus three in New York, minus four in California. And that's based on estimated population trends. If the current population out-migration from California and New York and a handful of other states, let's not forget, um, who else is going to be a big loser? Illinois with minus two. We got Minnesota with minus one. You got Michigan with minus one. Huh. What do all those states have in common? I can't put my finger on it. But hey, you know, Texas doing well with plus four, Florida with plus three. Then we got Arizona with plus one, Utah with one, Idaho with one. I mean, Idaho could get an extra seat. This is the, the, the end result of policy, like what California is continuously doing, is, is what is possibly projected here. This is, uh, this was how congressional maps could change in 2030. And that's by the Brennan Center for Justice. It, they're, they're, they're extrapolating. All right. We know population is doing this. So by the end of the 2020s, hit 20, 2030, this is what they're predicting it could look like. Some big changes. And those are some big, big changes. Meanwhile, California. <laughs> fast food industry. It's okay. I mean, we'll just jack up the the minimum month, minimum hourly wage. And I'm sure all these companies will stick around and, you know, this is your first warning shot. No, we got to fire all of those guys. So that's where you sit. So many of the franchisees will rely on third party delivery apps like Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. But by the time they get paying the cut to Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash, it doesn't make any sense. But they'll make a little bit of money on the fact that they are covering some overhead. And it, the the third-party applications do not work all that great for actual restaurants. It's great for the consumer. I mean, it's not all that great for the consumer from the standpoint of, hey, why is there a $10 delivery charge on here? I don't know if you ever do much in the way of DoorDash, but I have in the past. I've done a lot just out of convenience, just didn't feel like leaving the house. I've got a 7-Eleven like a mile away that's, I think, a 99-cent delivery fee, something like that. And I can get stuff just, you know, in 15 minutes. So if I just really want to watch the end of some ridiculous movie or a game, I'll do that. But all these extra fees in there, you know, those are going to these third parties. They're not going to the restaurants. And they're taking away from the consumer because we're knuckleheads and we choose to pay for just sitting our asses on the uh, on the couch and watching a show. And oh, I'll just tee it up on my phone. You want a Snickers with that? Yes, I do. The layoffs announcement came months before most fast food workers in California will begin earning a minimum wage of $20 per hour. This begins in April. So this is ahead of the curve. All right. So these restaurants are basically saying, okay, given the economics, uh, here's our margin and here's our expenses and here's our revenue. All right. Are you guys delivering the pies? Yeah, we're a hard no-go. You guys are out of here. You're done. The increase was proposed as a way to offset the increasing cost of living for Californians. Huh. Yeah, but it results in fewer jobs. Interesting. That's interesting, isn't it? One of the, um, I think one of my my podcasts that went off this morning was on uh, the big outflow of California in general, and then also the $68 billion deficit that California is, is staring down. Now, they can, California can do a handful of things within their within within the money they have in their their state system to offset some of that that big huge budget deficit but the discussion in the premier this morning came down to do you remember when new york city said that <laughs> it was in new york city or it was the i think it was new york city said hey all the illegal immigrants, they're going to be bringing in a lot of revenue into our state. So we welcome them as a sanctuary city. We're welcoming them. They're not bringing any money. They are actually a massive, massive liability because you got to house those people, feed those people. 
just the whole equation is billions and billions of dollars. So meanwhile, California is doing the same thing. All right, let's jump, let's, you know, push up that hourly wage. This should work out great. It's going to help all those people. It's going to trickle down. Yeah. And this is the first real indication we have. You're fired. Offset the increasing cost of living for Californians. Why don't you repeal a whole bunch of the taxes and then the people at the lowest point in the totem pole actually retain more of their earnings, whatever those might be. How about that? Uh, that's, that's just not progressive enough, Sean. We can't have that. That would be real progress, not this other progress we've got going on here, which is wrong direction progress. One Pizza Hut delivery driver told Business Insider that he was offered a $400 severance if he stuck around through his February 5th layoff date. Here's the deal. We got to announce this because we got to make this notification according to state law. All right, we're laying off all these folks in a in a case of a mass layoff. Most states have some kind of thing where the uh, corporation has to disclose early, whatever it might be. So they're offering this guy four hundred bucks if he sticks around through his February fifth layoff date. All right, can't have you leaving. We need your services until then because we're getting screwed by Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that. But um, if you stick around, we'll give you 400 bucks. His comeback to that was the money they are giving us at severance pay is a slap in the face, he told Insider. It comes to $3 a month for nine plus years of service. Ooh, hey now, that's not a lot of money, is it? So it's not like each individual franchise has millions of dollars sitting around, right? And this move to increase the hourly wage is just a squeeze on their budget. Along with, I mean, we're not even talking about how since the pandemic, everything has gone up. I was watching a quick clip of somebody they were talking about, hey, I bought uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinner this year. They bought all of the ingredients for their Thanksgiving dinner, and they said it was literally double what they paid last year. Are you guys experiencing that? I don't, I don't ever prepare the meal. Um, sometimes I'll pay for it, but I never, so I don't really know how much, you know, all the, uh, the, the whole kit and caboodle, the whole, for all the shenanigans of a Thanksgiving dinner, how much it would cost. I have no idea. My aunt does that. My mom does that when I go down, but, um, you know, folks that are people that are cooking for a whole family are like, yeah, it was double. Like, okay, so we're not even talking about that aspect of food costs have gone through the roof, right? Expenses have gone through the roof. Gasoline has gone through the roof. You know, you've got all of these things, taxes. None of these things have come back down. This is all part of Build Back Better, right? Joe Biden's America. I mean, Build Back Better. We're, we're going for it, aren't we? Yeah. Meanwhile, we're going to have to let you go, but here's 400 bucks if you stick around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. But if you are a delivery driver for nine years, that is some service right there. They are, they do owe you more than 400 bucks, but it's not, again, it's not in the budget, right? It's not in the budget. Fox business has reached out to pizza hut operations, but has not heard yet heard back yet. Hey, we understand you're firing all those poor delivery drivers. Is that true? No, that's what they're reaching out to do. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. So yeah, this is, you're going to hear, you're going to hear a bunch more uh, about individual companies and, you know, possibly companies shutting down. And it's because all of this policy it, it doesn't help. It doesn't help things. It takes things in the wrong direction. You know, this whole workers of the world unite thing, got the same deal going on here in Seattle. Just a bunch of knuckleheads that are just socialists at, at their core, right? And, and they're just like, tax Amazon. Amazon can afford it. Until Amazon says, hey, you know what? Go F yourselves. Um, no. And um, we're going to take a bunch of our people and we're going to move them over to Bellevue and that whole, you know, headquarters too thing. Yeah, we're not putting it here in Seattle. We're not, we're not expanding in Seattle. We're constricting because your policy is targeting us and we're going to say X nay to that nay and we're out of here. Pizza Hut says, got to let these guys go. Can't afford it. Simply can't afford it. So you're going to see more and more on this story, specifically this story 
of the hourly wage. But the Pizza Hut firing their delivery guys, that's the first one, kind of the major shot across the bow that I think you're going to see. And you're, what you're seeing is just an avalanche of things happening to California, to New York, to Illinois, to Chicago, because it takes more and more revenue to you know, fund all of these programs when in reality, you've got the population leaving these areas. Specifically in California, you've got millionaires leaving. And why wouldn't you? State income tax, all that crazy stuff. Another discussion we had this morning was Jeff Bezos of uh, Amazon fame has recently, he uprooted and he moved to Florida. Jeff Bezos, Florida, right? (laughs) And some of that had to do with, ah, he wants the warmer weather. He no longer really needs to work the way he did. I I jokingly told somebody he just wants to watch his new girlfriend run around in a in in a bikini in Florida. That's what I said. That's his whole reason. No, there's a um, you know, beyond two hundred and fifty grand in the state of Washington, there's a pretty good size capital gains tax. So if he wants to sell off some stock, it doesn't make sense for him to be a uh, Washington state is pushing wealthy people out, period. That's what you get with that kind of policy. You know, it's not that hard to figure out. This is, this is not rocket science. All right. And all the numbers. Okay. So let's look at that. Let's just go back to that congressional map for, for just a, just a, a quick second. Um, all right. Yeah. So Washington is unchanged. Oregon <laughs> minus one, California minus four. It's, it's, it's as simple as blue and red, right? Texas plus four, Florida plus three. It, it's not that hard to figure out. You've got states that are doing well and you've got states that are not. And there's a reason. They're not doing well. And it's because they're pushing this kind of stuff. Ah, let's, let's just jack up the hourly rate and we'll see what happens. Yeah, you just, you multiply that, you compound that by, you know, multiple instances and multiple exam, examples of state bills and all this craziness. And it's hard to get a business going. San Francisco is probably one of the most difficult cities to build anything in. You know, it's just layer after layer after layer of bureaucracy. Whereas you go down to Texas, where they're gaining four seats, possibly by 2030, it's blow and go, build, develop, build, develop. You know, it just flat is. That's just how they do it. And they don't have all these layers of just absolute nonsense. And I think that's becoming apparent to people. People are recognizing that. People are like, wow, I am really getting taxed you know, out the back end here and my quality of life, I can't afford a home, the quality of life, I'm commuting to a job I don't like that's taken 45% in taxes. Why am I here? Well, they're not. They're exiting New York, California, two biggest in, in 2022, two biggest examples of out migration. So there you go. There's your sign, right? Crazy times. All right. It's enough of the shenanigans for this podcast. I will catch up with you in the next one. All right. Thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.